broke my wheel. Put it free out of it. Great Balls of Fire The recently deceased Jerry Lee Lewis was once considered to be the most untamable rock and roll star we've ever had. His talent, energy, and yes, ego all collided on such infamous songs such as Whole Lotta Shakin' Going On, Breathless, and High School Confidential, as well as many more. Not to mention, he managed to sustain a career that was otherwise marred by personal scandal for over half a century. Of all the pioneers of rock and roll music to emerge out of the 1950s, few capture the genre's energy and danger as much as this Louisiana-born superstar. Also, Michael and I have dropped our own house tour of our new home that we moved into this year, so go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel if you want to see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. piano player who liked to revert to himself as the killer. Lewis grew up as part of an impoverished family in eastern Louisiana in the town of Faraday. More specifically, he grew up in a less than glamorous family home located on Louisiana Avenue, which serves as his hometown's main street. To this day, members of his family still live in this home. In fact, his sister Frankie Jean Lewis Terrell has lived on the premises ever since her family first came to own the property. And over the years, she's given a number of tours to fans of her brother's work who have made a pilgrimage to his childhood home to see where his story started. The first thing you'll probably notice when you arrive are the grave markers that fill in one side of the lawn. Get a little closer to the front of the house and you'll see an oversized dinner bell hanging over your head on the family's front porch. As for the front door, well, it boasts a nailed on wooden cross right in the middle of it that has a sign attached that reads, tour hours one to six. Once you ring your giant dinner bell and get Frankie's attention for the price of only $10, she'll offer to guide you through her family's memories and a maze of paraphernalia all dedicated to Jerry's life. Frankie once explained her reasons for running these tours to the Natchez Democrat, stating, This house is a living museum. It cannot be kept alive with just myself. I operate on nickels and dimes, but there is no greater pleasure than to talk about my family. That might have something to do with how cursed Frankie believes her family is. Not only was her older brother Elmo Jr. killed by a drunk driver years ago, but over the decades, many members of the Lewis family have fallen on hard times. Their father Elmo Lewis was even convicted for making moonshine, while their mother Mamie Lewis cared for the family and the home until her death in 1971. The last piece of shortbread she ever made still sits on the skillet on the stove where she left it. Seriously. As for her famous brother, Jerry learned how to play piano in this very house by gluing himself to the bench from 9 a.m. to 2 a.m. every day. Deeper inside the house, you'll discover a bunch of oddities. Not only has Frankie kept such unusual treasures like Jerry's baby potty, she's also held on to other knickknacks, including Elvis Presley's medicine bottles, a dress of Dolly Parton's, and what might be the weirdest of all, cufflinks that once belonged to Adolf Hitler. The walls and most other flat surfaces are covered with family photos and artwork created by Frankie and her son, as well as note cards taped to nearly every surface that give tidbits of family history. Then there's the closet full of VHS tapes of Jerry playing his music and a bunch of old suitcases in the dining room that are jam-packed with old cassette tape recordings. If you're looking for something a little more recent, over on the fridge there's a note posted from Jerry Lee Lewis himself during his most recent trip to the family home last July. Not that Frankie saw him while he was there, she explained to the Natchez Democrat, I didn't talk to Jerry for 20 years, now I call every day and leave a message. On July 22nd, Jerry was in town but he didn't tell me he was coming so I stayed in my room, I didn't see him. According to Frankie, Jerry never was one to send money back home but she never really expected him to in the first place and says that she's always been content simply to live her life on this property. To be honest, if you spend enough time on this property, you'll come to the realization that his home really isn't about Jerry Lee Lewis as much as it is about the family he left behind when he headed to Memphis, Tennessee to make a name for himself in the music industry. But amazingly enough, it's still standing even after all these years. 
So if you've ever wanted to see the very definition of a humble beginning, be sure to stop by if you're ever in Faraday, Louisiana. For now though, let's move on and visit what would become Jerry's longtime home in his adopted state of Tennessee. At the age of 21, Jerry Lee Lewis arrived in Memphis, Tennessee in 1956. The Louisiana native then moved in with his cousin's family in the Coral Lake neighborhood in South Memphis. It was here that Jerry would meet his cousin's daughter, Myra Gail Brown, and eventually marry her when she was only 13 years old. And this is what they were talking about when they say controversial. Despite the enormous success that he'd quickly find as a musician once the wider public at large found out about Myra, the scandal derailed Jerry's career for more than a decade, sending him into hiding where he would wind up spending a lot of his free time at a ranch located on Malone Road in Nesbitt, just south of Memphis in DeSoto County. Lewis bought the home in 1973 and it most definitely so reflects that that era with its blue shag carpets, glittering chandeliers, and framed photos of famous people lining its many hallways. Driving through the black iron front gates of this southern colonial brick ranch would make anyone feel like a celebrity. Today, Jerry's son, Jerry Lee Lewis III, still lives near the property. Until his recent passing, his father would stop by regularly as well, but spent most of his final years living with his seventh wife, Judith, in a senior community center near Snowden Grove. Grove Park down the road in Hernando. Much like his Aunt Frankie, Louis III now gives tours of his father's estate and is always quick to provide a little background on how it came to be. He explained to Click Magazine. The guy who built the house actually helped build the extension on the Memphis airport. Dad says he packed the walls with steel and airplane parts. I'd never knocked down a wall to find out, but I can tell you the red brick all the way around the house and the brick columns down the gates, it all came from Chicago. When asked about his pops, Lewis is always quick to paint his father as private, introspective man who would amble into the kitchen in his bathrobe in search of coffee and then take his breakfast to his room. The thing Jerry apparently loved most about his nearly 30 acres of land was how much privacy it afforded him. According to his son, Jerry also fell in love with the area's rolling hills and its many trees when he first set eyes on the place back in the early 70s. He explained to Click Magazine, from what he told me he was driving around down here one day and noticed this place was for sale and he says this is where I want to be. At the end of the day, this was always home. I mean, he's been married several times and moved around several times, but he always comes back here. Walking through the home is almost like taking a trip inside a time machine, maybe not quite as dramatic as his childhood house, but certainly unique in its own way. Stepping through the property's many living spaces, you'll soon discover Jerry's gold records, his awards, and his performance attire from the 50s and 60s. Over in the tiny intimate kitchen that's located just off the garage, everything is still in its original state from the 70s, except for the bar top and sink. And yes, that's Coca-Cola wallpaper plastered all over the walls in honor of Jerry's favorite beverage. Speaking of Coke, there are other relics strewn about as well, like a vintage Coca-Cola machine, a kitchen appliances from the 60s, and a pinball machine in the family den. Just a few steps away from there is a patio that sits next to Jerry's famous piano-shaped swimming pool. A front side living room is accented with dozens of honorary keys to cities and even more photographs. There's also a framed American flag from the 1971 Apollo 14 space mission, the third mission to land on the moon. Not far from there is an ornate white upholstered French style couch with gold legs located right next to the very first electric piano Jerry ever owned. But the most unusual part of all has definitely got to be the dozens of knife marks you'll uncover inside Jerry's bedroom door where he once taught his son how to throw a knife. Elsewhere in the room is the killer's former king size bed, a big screen TV, and a framed autographed jersey of NFL legend Peyton Manning. The most heartwarming part of the tour has got to be the Jerry Lee Lewis Pet Cemetery that houses the remains of his many animals over the years, including his dogs, Honey Lee Lewis, Topaz Lee Lewis, Superman Lee Lewis, Country Dog Lee Lewis, and one cat. How Lee Lewis. I think it's sweet how he gave them all his full family name. Back in the 90s and 2000s, Jerry used to give these tours of the property himself, but eventually, once his personal life was upended with his sixth divorce, he stopped the practice for a number of years. 
Lucky for us, he decided to open his family home's doors once again in 2017, and the tours have been going strong ever since. So if you've got $30 and you aren't too far from Memphis, Tennessee, then you too can gain a deeper understanding into one of rock and roll's greatest wild men and performers. And with his recent passing after a bout with pneumonia, there's never been a better time to remind ourselves just how instrumental Jerry Lee Lewis was to the foundation of rock and roll. All right, everyone, that is gonna bring this latest edition of House Tour to a close. Before you head out, ask yourselves this one question. If you were one of the most influential musicians ever, would you open your family home's doors to the public or maintain your privacy as much as possible? Let me know your answers in the comments down below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss a tour. Thanks for watching. My name is Kara the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat, and I'll see you all in another video. Bye.